Hey everyone, welcome to episode 41 of the By the Lakeside podcast. My name is Sandy and this is a podcast about my knitting and sewing that takes place here in my home, which is just outside of Toronto in Canada and by the lake. It is Saturday, November 30th, and I am so excited that tomorrow is December 1st and it is super, super crazy around here though. I had hoped to be a little bit farther along and podcast earlier in the week because I do have a shop update tomorrow on Sunday. So I'm kind of scrambling to finish up some pressing and packing for that and decorate for Christmas and tidy up and get the advents ready for everybody. So it's a little bit crazy, but I really wanted to check in with you guys before I start Vlogmas, which is starting tomorrow. So I will be participating and um, filming every day from December 1st until the 24th. And so I think today is going to be kind of a short and sweet podcast to share where I am right now. And then there'll be lots more to share throughout December. So I guess I should tell you where else you can find me if you are new here. Um, on Instagram, I am Sandy by the Lakeside. On Ravelry, I am Sandy Ran, and I have a website where I sell project bags for knitters and leather accessories and bags, and that is bythelakeside.com. I will be sharing the winners to the giveaway that I spoke about in my last podcast at the end of this episode, so um, stay tuned for that. But for now, let's get started. I actually have a finished object. It's been a while and as you probably know, I've been struggling a little bit this fall with making time to knit. Part of it was I just wasn't into it for a little while and then it's just, it's been a super busy season in our household for many, many reasons, lots of things going on. Um, but I've been carving out a little bit more time, which has been really, really good. So I have a finished object, which is this beautiful hat. The pattern is College Bound Hat. It is by Christina from Chelsea Yarns. You can find the pattern on her website, which is chelseayarns.com. It is a super easy, fun knit. Um, it was quick to knit it up. I think I did it in like two days. I'm not sure, but I used her cobblestone base, which is this beautiful textured yarn. I'm sure you have seen it. And I held it with a strand of mohair and both of those were in the color by the lakeside, which Christina dyed for, for like a collaboration kind of thing that we did. And I just love it. I'm in love with this color. It's just, perfect. It's kind of soft, but it still has this like lavender, lavender and some purple tones in there. And I just think it's so pretty. I cannot wait to wear this. I do still need to weave in the ends and block it. I think I'm just going to stretch it a teensy little bit. So it kind of has a slouchier, um, it's a little bit snug on my head and I don't want to mess up my hair, but I also need to find the perfect pom-pom. It was a super fun knit. If you are looking for a quick uh, winter hat, this is a great pattern. It's really, um, it's just enjoyable. I really like making hats. So I would highly recommend that pattern. And if you haven't tried um, a skein of that slubby yarn, then this is a great uh, project to try out for it. So other than that, that was sort of what got me back into my knitting groove again. I've been kind of a, working a little bit on my weekender sweater, but it doesn't really look much different, so I'm not going to share that. But I started to get back into socks, which is, it's been a long time. I have not really been into socks, and so I dug out this project bag of mine, and it's got, um, because I know I recently did finish this cute little ankle sock that I shared in one of my last podcasts. And instead of casting it on, I found another one that was almost done. I was almost done the first sock. So I did do a couple more inches on that one and I love this colorway. So this is Scrumptious Pearl yarn. Um, it's a self-striping yarn and I love this color combination so much. 
I cast this on when I was in Cape Cod last year and it's called Pool Party and I cast it on by the pool and I've got this cute little um, apple cider donut progress keeper on there from Sucre Sucre Miniatures. So pretty. And this is the yarn. So because I was, I had passed the heel, I thought I'm just going to try to do brainless knitting. There's, you know, no stress, no real pattern reading. I just do a basic vanilla sock and um, it's kind of based off of Susan B. Anderson's How I Make My Socks on her blog, if you look that up. Um, I cast on 64 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter needle. This one has just a two by two rib for, I don't know, not quite two inches, maybe an inch and a half, almost two inches. And it just has a traditional heel flap and gusset. So I thought this would be fun to just finish off. And um, the rate that I knit socks because I drop them pick them up and drop them often and I they kind of sit in bags for a long time I thought I'll keep the two that are um, at the top of my list in this bag so that whenever I just want to grab a sock I can do that um, and then I really started to think about my Christmas socks so last year I started the um, the cozy knitters advent 2018 socks and I loved that project I loved that yarn and I have one for this year, the 2000, did I say 19 or 18? I'm talking about my 2018 project in here, but I also now have the 2019 skein. And so before I got it in my hands, I was thinking, well, I'm going to have this new skein and I really want to keep up with it this Advent. And I remembered that I didn't finish my skein from last year or my socks from last year. So I pulled out my project, which you guys, if you watched Vlogmas last year, you probably remember. It's in my cute bag from two, almost three years ago now. Um, the little reindeers. And so this is last year, so do not fret if you have this year's and you don't wanna see it, it's okay. This is the skein from last year. Um, it comes, well, this is the cake, but it comes so that you can wind it into two separate balls and knit them exactly the same. So the one that I did last year is here. And this was um, the progress I had made. And when I pulled it out, this is what I found. And I thought this would be a great time to do the heel. I didn't really feel like doing the heel. And so I thought I'm just gonna cast on the second one because I had extra needles and the skeins are separate. So how perfect is that? And so I just did this last weekend. I did it fairly quickly yeah. and I'm really excited about it. Now it's almost December 1st, but that's okay. I'm gonna put this to the side and just plug away at it as I go. So I think it's beautiful. It is 24 different colors, stripes, and this is a little peppermint bark progress keeper from the Gnome Knitter. And I decided to use my leather scissor covers or sheaths on my sock needles because it's great um, when you throw them in your bag and you don't want the stitches to come off the needles. So I really love this sock. I was hoping that I would have been knitting a little bit more this week, but that's okay. I've been preparing for my shop update. It's been keeping me really, really busy. Um, so family, and work come first and the knitting gets squeezed in whenever I can. So the funny thing is though, I cast it on, I think when some friends were over knitting and I was just moving along, moving along. And then I did all of this during a soccer game and watching a movie with my family. And I got to this point and I put them down to take a picture of them. And I realized I've done two different cuffs. The first one I did a twisted rib, which is very pretty. And then the second one, I just did a traditional two by two rib. So I didn't, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even consider ripping it out because there's no way that I was gonna rip all that out just to fix the cuff. So I think they'll still be cute and I cannot wait to wear them. 
We'll see how it goes because I am excited to cast on my 2019 Advent skein, which I have right over there, but I'm going to keep it a secret because it is not December yet. And you will get to see it, um, I guess tomorrow when vlogs start. I've got a new bag set aside for that, which I'll share in a little bit too, but um, I think I might cast on those cuffs tonight if I have time and I'm not too tired after decorating for Christmas. I would love to just start tomorrow on the stripes and I'm planning on casting both on but separately. Um, I don't do two at a time on the same needles, but I would like to do, I think this year, um, two sets of needles so that I can do it the way I have them in that bag now. I think it's just easier for me, so I will, you know, do a few stripes consecutively on each one at a time. So I think that covers my knitting projects. I did make something else a week or two ago, which I was having so much fun with, and I hope to make a few more for Christmas for a few people. But I had this beautiful Liberty of London fabric in my stash that I've used, I think for various things, one I made a top with, I'm not sure what the other one was. And so I decided to make some hair scrunchies. Now, if you're my age, you remember them but they are totally back. Um, I've been seeing them everywhere for quite a while now and they're super cute in this Liberty of London fabric. And so it's really easy. I just used a Martha Stewart um, tutorial online and it was a video tutorial. It was super easy. It's basically a tube you turn inside out and you fish a piece of elastic through it and it just gives you the measurements. Um, th there's a few different ways to do it, but I used hers. Um, and I liked it. And then you just hand sew the, the two ends together. So it's quite clean finished and super cute. And I think these fabrics are adorable. So I made myself some hair scrunchies, which was a fun little November make. And I think that's that. Now, I know I spoke in my last vlog about the November no buy, and I'm going to be really, really honest. I really appreciated everyone's comments about that. You guys are the best. I felt so supported and there was so much encouragement about not worrying about it. And that, what was it? That a food processor and makeup are really essentials and so they don't count, which I, I do believe is true. But after that, I was weak, and I think it was from um, Vanessa's influence from Van Ray Knits. I'll put her Instagram up on the screen. She just has the most beautiful um, projects on her Instagram, and she uses a lot of knit collage because she works for them. And I have always wanted some knit collage yarn. And I was browsing and I found these little kits and I thought, what a fun way to try it out. So I was weak and I made a yarn purchase, but I think it was so worth it. This, I'm not even sure, let's see what it's called. It's just called the Yarn Sampler Mini Kit from Knit Collage. And... Let's say the color on here. I feel like this one was called Natural. I can't really remember now. Yes, it is. It's called Natural, this colorway. So you get um, a sampler. Like this here is actually a fabric yarn. Um, there's one in here with like little daisies on it. And so I've been really wanting to try some of this for a really long time. And I think I might do the cowl pattern that is a free pattern on their website that you can use this kit for, I think. And if not, this is gonna go in my Penguono, which has been sitting in a bag and has been a dream for, I don't know, a really long time. So this broke me. And once I was broken on the no-buy, it just, it all went down the tube. So, I do have one other, um, little yarn package that arrived just yesterday from my sweet friend, Christina at Chelsea Yarns. And I almost feel bad showing you because how lucky am I that I have such an amazing friend who dyes the most gorgeous yarn. Christina sent me a package. 
including these yarns. Oops, there we go. This is her gingerbread house colorway and I am in love with it. Purple is one of my favorites and in the last few months, green has become a favorite of mine too. And this is the most beautiful, like look at this. I love this. All I wanna do is make hats. So she sent me her Chunky, is that what it's called? Her Lux Chunky, and also her Lux DK. And as if that wasn't enough, this pom pom. Oh, I cannot wait. I cannot wait until next week. I feel like next week, after the shop update is done and I've gotten into the groove of vlogging, I am just going to enjoy December and the work that I have ahead of me for my shop is not um, time sensitive. I have time to just cut and prepare for January because I won't be doing another, well, I don't know for sure because I do have a lot of patchwork pouches that I know I've mentioned and I know people are waiting for, but they really had to take a back seat for this update because Christmas bags and a winter kit need to go out. They are more time sensitive. so. I'm going to get back to my patchwork pouches, but what I was trying to say is I think my plan for December is that um, I'm going to focus on work that won't be as physically demanding on me as an actual large shop update. And so I hope to get so many hats made, finish socks, uh, finish my weekender, sew a little bit, and um, I have a quilt that I'd like to start cutting out for. I haven't done that yet. So, so many exciting making plans for December. I cannot wait. Okay, I think that's it for my knitting. That's it for acquisitions, which is really good. And I guess I will share what will be in my shop update tomorrow. Um, the first one, I am so excited. I've been keeping a little secret and the secret is out now because um, I did a collaboration with my sweet friend Maria from Woolen Forest. Her Etsy shop is called Forest Charms and she does the most beautiful uh, progress keepers and charms and I've showed them before because I have purchased them and I absolutely adore them. They are so gorgeous. And so we decided to do a little winter kit together. It's called the Winter Walk Kit. And she's already um, posted them in her shop today, in her Etsy shop, and they've sold out. And my batch of them will be available in my shop tomorrow, which is Sunday, December 1st at 3 p.m. is, I believe, the time I put. I'm pretty sure it's 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And so what we did is we found, um, we picked a fabric together that we thought um, we could both work with and she could do some beautiful charms for. And I think it turned out so pretty. I'm so happy with this kit. I absolutely adore it. The project bag is a small one and it has this beautiful forest scene with this girl. Let's see, there she is with pink hair and a backpack and a dog and she's just walking through the woods and I love it. It has um, a mustard zipper and a navy blue tassel and the inside is a gray gingham. So I really, really like this bag and I'm definitely gonna use this for a hat. Maybe this one will go in there. And then her beautiful charms, I hope I can zoom in on this a little bit. One of them is this gorgeous progress keeper with the trees. Let's see if I can do maybe that. And the little yellow stone. And then there are a couple of stitch markers with this beautiful green bead on there. And I think they're so beautiful and they work so well together. So we were so happy to do this together. And um, it's very limited. We, you know, we did as many as we could and they will be in the shop tomorrow and um, I hope you guys like them. The other bag that will be in the shop tomorrow is my Christmas bag for the year or holiday bag if you don't celebrate Christmas. Um, and it is this really fun corally pink bag with angels and they look like um, 
kind of like nutcrackers, but not exactly. They're just super cute little holiday inspired people. And this one has a peach zipper with a sparkly gold tassel. And this one's also lined with the gingham. And what I will be putting in here is my Cozy Knitter 2019 Advent 24 Stripe Skein, which is right here, but it's still a secret. And I'm going to do a cream contrast heel cuff and toe. So I'm gonna hide that in that bag. So it's all ready to go. I'm gonna try to cast this on tonight and get those cuffs done. So that is what will be in the shop tomorrow. And I will be pushing to get everything out on Monday so that I can do the best <laughs> shipping possible before the holidays. And I think, I think we're still good. I think you have until December 8th to guarantee shipping for Christmas, but um, shipping is usually great, but the odd time you run into a little bit of a problem. So um, I'm just gonna push to get everything out on Monday or by the latest Tuesday. Um, I do have one other thing that I have been working on quietly in the background for probably a year um, and more intensely in the last six months. But I have been dreaming of a large leather tote because you guys know that I do. Um, you know I have the leather pouches. I've got um, like the tubes with the handles, the larger one and the small one. And I've just been dreaming of a large tote because Ever since I've had a part-time job in high school, I've been obsessed with bags and leather bags. I used to design clothing for Roots in Canada, which if you know Roots and you're Canadian, you know about their leather goods. And I think I spent half my paychecks on their bags because I was so obsessed with them. And so in the last couple of years working with leather, I thought I'm just going to try to develop my own everything tote. I love a big huge tote. Now I mean big because I just like to stuff everything in it. This is not like I just need to go to the grocery store kind of tote bag. This is I'm going somewhere and I need to pack my life with me because that's what I do. So I finally came up with the bag. This is it and it is really big. I'm not sure if you can see how big but it is really really large. And it's a bit deceiving because you can tie the um, this tie to pull the sides in a little bit so it's not too bulky if you don't need it to be. But you can undo that tie if you really want to put in multiple projects. And I think I'll just put a few things in it so you can see. But um, I'm really, really happy with it. It actually smells so good. So I can pack tons of project bags in here. Um, tuck in my pencil cases, my planner, my wallet, my makeup, whatever I want. And it's just perfect to pile in all the things. So I'm gonna put some yarn in there. I mean, I've packed up almost everything I've shown you here. And you can see, maybe I'll move back a little bit. You can see, I can still fit probably a sweater in here. Um, like pretty much anything, <laughs> it's huge. And I just tied this on yesterday because I thought it was perfect. This is the Shelly Can Makers bandana. I thought it was so cute on here, but I wanted to have a super large everything tote and I wanted the handles to be big enough so that it wasn't hanging or it wasn't bothering your underarm, especially if you need to wear winter coats or if you're wearing a big sweater or if you're at Rhinebeck wearing beautiful sweaters. So you definitely have lots and lots of room without it. I, I have a bag that is a really large tote. It's not quite as big and I love it, but I think the bag comes like right up here. So it's a little uncomfortable. And I just wanted to keep it super simple. It is not lined. It does have a pocket in here so that you can slide. It's quite deep so you can slide your phone in there but I didn't want a zipper closure. I just wanted it to feel super relaxed, very casual, but beautiful. And I love that you can tie, you can tie it so that 
You can cinch it in, keep your stuff safe. Everything's pretty safe in there. And that's it. So I'm super happy. And I also have my little scissors in the front here so you can see. And I am trying to work out all the details so that I can maybe put some pre-orders up for these. Um, they would be available in this brown, which all of my other pouches are in, and then also a black. If anyone is interested, I will post more details on Instagram about when that information will be ready on my website. And I think what I will do is because they're so big and they will, um, it will be a higher priced item that I think I'll set up pre-orders for these. And so if you want one, um, it'll be like a made to order bag. So that's really exciting. I'm so happy that I finally have it and I'm going to be using it and trying it out this week. But, um, I'm actually adding one little detail to it because this was like my first go around at the final design, but I am planning on adding just a little, um, little D ring in here so that if you do have keys or something that you want to clip on, they won't get lost at the bottom of your bag. So that will be in addition for um, bags that I sell. And that's that. So the last thing I'd like to do is announce two winners for the giveaway that I mentioned in the last episode. So um, the entries were on Ravelry in the By the Lakeside group page or thread, and um, there were 600, there were 613 entries because the first one was me and I didn't count. So I went to the random number generator on my phone and put in number two to number 614. And so the first winner was, um, I don't know if I'm saying it right, number 47. She is Suze Rob. So um, I'll put the name on the screen. I'm assuming it's Susie. But um, Susie or Suze Rob will be winning a copy of Nomadic Knits along with one of my project bags and a few other little good goodies I'll be putting in the prize pack, which I'll put together this week. So congratulations, Suze Rob. The second winner will get an also a copy of Nomadic Knits magazine, which is beautiful. I showed this in my last, my last um, podcast. There's like recipes and drinks and beautiful knitting patterns. The photography in here is gorgeous. So you guys are so lucky. Nomadic Knits donated these for you. And the second winner to win that along with this beautiful Knit Circus gradient skein of yarn is number 337, who is Squeeze Cuddles from Australia. Sue's Rob was from Texas, but Squeeze Cuddles from Australia, congratulations. If you guys would like to contact me through Ravelry and send me your address, I will put together a package for you and send that out in the next week or so. So thank you so much to everyone that entered in that. And I did read everything, but I didn't want to mix up by commenting on anything, so I did not do that. But thank you, I read each and every one of your comments or entries, and um, I really appreciated a lot of the uh, sweet things that you guys had to say about podcasting versus vlogging. So thank you very much, and I am looking forward to do doing another giveaway maybe in the new year. So I think that's it. I feel like I did this pretty quickly. So I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna say goodbye. And uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. And if you are interested in seeing what I'm up to and what my family is up to every day or most days in December, then we will start doing a Vlogmas tomorrow. So I hope you'll join me with that and I hope you guys are doing well and I'll see you soon.